Hey everybody, it's Derek and welcome back to CRM Tip of the Day's Video Tips, your source for tips and step-by-step -step instruction on the latest version of Microsoft Dynamics CRM. So in today's video, we're going to continue our portal introduction series and talk a little bit about the configuration piece. So if you remember last time, we talked a lot about, you know, just the basic setup. How do you get the, the portal set up inside the application? How do you create a couple of pages? How do you edit the navigation? How do you edit some of the content? Now I want to take a look at it from the CRM perspective and how do you actually go in and, you know, tie it to entities inside the application? How do you see how the pages are designed? How do you construct some of the, some of the security? Those types of things. We're not necessarily going to get into all of that in this video, but I at least want to make sure that we have an understanding of what the configuration looks like, and then we can kind of build on that as we move forward. So let's take a look at some of the basic configuration inside the application. So I'm going to go ahead and just go into the portals menu. So if I go into portals, here I can see kind of some of the baseline configuration elements. And so obviously the first area that you're going to see in here is going to be kind of your website area. So this is where as you get more experience with it if you want to start creating page templates and items that you can use to really kind of brand the application and, and brand the item the way that you want. This is where you can design some of those different elements. This is also going to have some of your specific websites that are that are tied to this instance. So this is where if you've gone in and maybe, you know, provisioned, you know, s some other different types of website settings, maybe for partner portals or different things, this is where you would have the capabilities to see what specific websites that you have within this kind of CRM tenant or this CRM CRM instance that you could work through. And then if you ever wanted to modify kind of bindings, maybe you wanted to change the theme to a different type of theme. Once you install that theme as a solution, you would then have the capabilities to come in here and modify some of the bindings. Then you get more into kind of your content area. And that's where you're going to be able to go in and do things like your entity forms and your entity lists. So if you really want to surface CRM information inside the application, this is where you can go in and can configure some of that. This is where if you have, you know, web forms that you want to create to kind of guide people through different situations where you can define those. This is where as those web pages are created. So if you remember in the last video, you know, we looked at some of the different things like the knowledge base and we looked at some of the different things like the, the, the my support portal and some of those things. That's where some of those different web pages and web template type situations are going to be stored. And then obviously you have your security. So we'll talk more about this in another video, but kind of the gist of it is your contacts are where you're going to store your security from a portal standpoint. So every portal user will have a contact record associated with it. Inside that contact record is where you're going to handle things like what's their username and are you going to require confirmations of email addresses and those kind of things to make sure that they have their item set up. And that's where if you want it linked with like an Azure Active Directory account, you can define some of those different situations. Entity permissions are what they would sound like from a security perspective. This is where you're going to manage kind of who has access to what types of different situations. Web roles are your equivalent to security rules. They're laid out a little bit different, but the concept is, is, is fairly similar in the fact that each person has to have a web role associated with them. Based upon their web role, when you go into individual pages, now you can define with what people with specific web roles can do inside that page. So can they edit the information? Can they update the information? So there's some out of the box canned web roles like for administrator and, and some of those options. And then you get into things like your invitations and your, your web page access. And as we get more into some of the security items, we'll talk specifically about what those items look like. But if, if we're being honest, if you, were, if you were like me when you first started playing with portals, the first thing that you wanted to know how to do is how do I surface CRM information inside my portal? So that's where I figured we'd start for today. So why don't we go ahead and take a look at that? There's there's two key elements to this that are going to kind of make this process up when you're working with it. There are entity forms and there's entity lists. And they sound exact they are exactly what they sound like. The entity list is going to basically be your 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 views or your list views that you want to surface inside the inf uh, the application or the portal for a specific entity. Your forms are going to be the entity forms that you want to surface inside the application. So let's first just look at the entity forms. So in here, you can see that I have a few different entity forms that have kind of been created based upon the customer service template that we installed. So there's the contact us, which is directly associated with the lead. There's the customer service for creation of a case, and there's customer service for editing of a case. And so what you're basically going to do when you go in and you create this 
entity form is you're going to tie this to the appropriate entity that you want to work with. So in this case, you're now going to go out and you're going to specify, as you can see, what, what entity you want to work with. You're then going to specify the form. And so if you think about from a CRM perspective, when you create forms, there's different forms available. There's the, the default form, there's the informational form, and then there's any custom forms that you've created. This is where you would now have the capabilities to decide what form you want to expose or, or have available when you're working with this. The tab is what tab you're going to kind of default that option to when you're going into the form. And so what information from what tab is going to be displayed. And then the mode obviously is what are they going to be able to do with it? So if this is an insert mode, this is obviously the form that we're going to use when we're creating a case inside the system. And then you'll also have the ability to define and you have to define the website that you want to associate it with. Now, if you're just doing a trial and you're, or, or something and you're experimenting with the functionality, you're really only going to have one website portal that you can define it to. If you're getting into scenarios where maybe you've purchased another portal instance, so you're using one for partners and maybe you're using one for employees, this is where you can kind of dictate, okay, Okay, what website instance do I want to push this out to so I have information around it? And then the other option that you have is entity permission. So one of the things we talked about in the, you know, the overview section here is you do have the capabilities to define specific access levels in regards to if people can edit or update or, or items. And this is where if you've created and defined those entity permissions, which again, we'll talk about in another video, this is where you could use those to your advantage as you're moving forward. Then you get just into some of your additional options based upon what you might want to do. So you've got options for adding CAPTCHA. You've got options for showing the ownership fields if you want to enable tool tips. So if you really want to start getting into kind of having finite control over what people are going to see as they're navigating through this entity form, this is where you can start getting into some of those specific details around what those items are going to look like as people are going with it. We can get into what happens when people are successful in situations we can get into redirect URLs if we want to redirect them to a specific area if something doesn't necessarily work right. We have action button settings. So this might be a situation where, you know, maybe you want to be able to initiate some type of resolution process. So somebody's going to come in, they're going to create a case. Now we want to also give them the capabilities to resolve a case, or we want to give them the capabilities to reopen a case that, that's viewed with inside the portal. They're going to need an action button in the application to be able to facilitate that. So under these additional settings where you see the action buttons, this is where you can configure these buttons that will actually be displayed on the form so people can initiate some of these individualized commands on the items that you want them to work with. And then there's additional options as far as, you know, attaching files, uh, working with just some some general geolocations and some of those things, some of more of your kind of advanced situations that you might want to take into account based upon what they're doing. So as you create these, you have to really, again, decide what you're going to use it for and what specific thing you want them to be able to accomplish when they get to that point. And that's where you're going to kind of dictate what the mode and what the item is going to be around that form as people have created it. Now on the flip side, that's your form. So you've got your, your entity form, or in this case, the case item that's gonna be displayed. The other option that you would have obviously would be your entity list. So when somebody goes in and opens up their portal, we want to display to them a list of cases. In order to facilitate that, I'm gonna to need to have the case list basically populated on that form. And so if I come into this, I can kind of see how that's done inside the portal configuration. So I'm going to go ahead and just open this up real quick. So you'll notice that same type of situation. You have to define the, the incident or the, the entity that you want to work with. You have to define the website that you want it to be associated with. But then the other thing that you're going to see in here is you're actually going to you're actually going to see the views that are defined. So this is where if you want them to be able to switch the view and have different view options available from a drop down perspective, this is where you can now define what specific settings you want them to be able to do in here. So this is where I can come in and I can actually add additional view options to this based upon what I want to do. And if I hit the advanced settings, I can even get so far as to defining what 
individual message I want to display in this. So this is going to default to a view called web open cases, but in the portal, it's actually going to be displayed as my open cases. And so for every view that you want to propagate in here, you would have to define what, what that view is and then any custom information you want to have associated with this. Then you get into kind of other specific situations. So now when you start talking about, you know, details, views, and, and items that you want to open up, this is where I can start surfacing some of those other entity forms and items that I might want to work with. Do I want them to have the appropriate entity permissions? So have I enabled entity permissions for this item? And do I want to push those across? Do I want searching functionality to be enabled? So is there going to be a search button where they could go ahead and perform some type of mechanism or searching criteria within the application? So this is where I would basically be able to define all of those options. And you can even get into enabling metadata, filtering based upon different meta metadata procedures. This is where you can start getting into filtering conditions. There's there's a lot of additional settings that, you know, maybe in some future videos we can kind of look at and, and decipher how those processes would work. But the combination of the both of, of having the entity forms and then going in and having actually the entity lists are what are going to make that information kind of really come to the forefront once you get into the portal. So for example, now that I have kind of my, my create a case from the entity form standpoint and I have my entity list, let's see what that would look like in the portal. So I'm just going to flip back to the portal here real quick and I'm going to go to my support because this is what ultimately was added to the navigation to facilitate this. When I get into the my support area, this is where I am going to see my case information surfaced. So one of the first things that I'm going to see, oh, let me sign in here real quick. So now that I'm signed in, there's my entity list. So this is my my open cases. So any cases that I had that were created and assigned to, to, to me within the application that are associated with, with me as a user, I would see where within here. I can see that within the entity list, here are those views that we defined. So here's those individual views that were displayed within the views that we worked through. There's that searching control option that we defined for searching. And now if I create an open open a new case right click on open a new case this is going to open up that case web our case entity form that we did that was designed and defined within the application so this is where now i can define what the title is i can do the case type basically i have all of the kind of you know individualized situation that was exposed on that general tab on that form because remember when we define the form we define what specific tab within the form that we wanted to use to facilitate this so this is what kind of gives gives us that ability to start surfacing CRM information in there. Now, to take this to the next level, that's where some of the different web templates and some of the different web page types are going to come in, because now I have a little bit more capabilities to really start controlling the look and the feel. And then when you start tying it in with the security items that are out there, as well as some of the content snippets and some of the custom styling, you know, CSS options that you would have for visualizations, now you can really brand this out and kind of make this looking. But I figured at the beginning, I at least wanted to show you the the starting point. So let's surface some CRM information, interact with it, and then kind of go with it from there. So that's your initial introduction to portal configuration and, and kind of the basics of exposing some baseline CRM information inside of the portal. Like I said, in future videos, we'll, we'll take it to the next step and we'll talk a little bit more about authentication and security and, and how to kind of lock things down and then give you some other foundational elements that you can use to really start spinning up your portals. But between now and then, hopefully you'll have an opportunity to play with some of this and, and surface some of that information in from there. So that'll do it for this week's video. Again, for all of us here at CRM Tip of the Day, this has been Derek saying thanks again for watching, everybody. Take care and have a good one.